As the film progresses, the action takes place in the wide, deep ocean, where the plot starts to take form. A lifeless body, devoid of any evidence of life or spirit, is seen descending into the murky depths in this sad picture. A broken and wet boat serving as the scene's backdrop symbolizes the mystery's chaotic unraveling. A woman suddenly emerges from unconsciousness against this chaotic backdrop, after receiving a violent knock to the head that has left a visible bloodstain. She shouts out in despair, wanting to find Richard, whose company she longs for in this confusing time. Her voice is filled with urgency. Her movements are sluggish, due to the overcrowding and the disorganized scattering of belongings, and she can hardly generate the energy to approach the door, since it is still obstinately resistant. She begs Richard to say something again, but he never speaks, which makes her worry and apprehension grow. She pulls off her jacket and moves forward, cautiously climbing to the top of the capsized boat, unconcerned by the challenging circumstances. The upper deck has broken, and the waves keep coming, so the boat is rocking crazily. Despite the hazards, she keeps reaching out for Richard, because she wants to find the answers she's been looking for, and because she desperately needs the solace, and reassurance that his presence would bring. She calls over and over, but each time she is met with a disquieting absence, she feels increasingly uneasy. The rope that was holding Richard in place catches her gaze next, almost as if by fate. She races towards the rope, expecting to see Richard at the other end, her hands gripping it with fierce resolve. She vigorously pulls on the rope. She does not advance, all she gets is white space. She lets out a piercing howl in the midst of her sorrow, as she struggles to accept the harsh reality of losing her spouse, its echoes blending with her own. Let's travel back in time, to the magnificent year of 1983 in the paradisiacal country of Tahiti for the next scenario, which takes place exactly five months earlier. We are in the middle of a wide ocean, surrounded by stunning turquoise waves. Tommy may be seen standing on a boat in this lovely scene as our camera pans across it, beaming with pure joy. Her gaze is firmly concentrated on the great expanse of blue water that stretches out in front of her, while a gorgeous mountain rises up far away. After reaching her destination at last, Tommy exits the boat and waves goodbye to the skipper. She sets out on her new chapter, while toting a rucksack loaded with eagerness. Going to the police department's immigration office is her first step, making sure her documentation is in order. Tommy is asked what she does for a career, and when the officer prods her further, she replies with the utmost confidence that she is capable of taking on any employment that may earn her enough money for her upcoming trip. She says she doesn't know how long she'll be in Tahiti, but she's open to exploring all possibilities. Tommy Oldham is a fascinating young woman who personifies adventure, always seeking out new experiences during her travels across the globe. She enters Tahiti's crowded streets carrying her possessions. The camera catches the energetic mood as residents and visitors coexist together. Tommy stops for a little period of time on her journey to indulge in a dinner and absorb the colorful atmosphere. The next morning, she starts her new job as a boat cleaner and strikes up a discussion with another employee. Her coworker inquires about the circumstances that brought Tommy to this location, out of curiosity. Tommy replies that she used to work as a chef on a schooner, but that she ultimately decided against going back to San Diego because of uncontrollable circumstances. She chose to come here instead, embracing the uncertainty. Tommy giggles and expresses doubt when her colleague asks when she'll eventually return, saying she wants to travel first before thinking about going home. In the subsequent scene, Tommy is poised on her surfboard and filled with excitement as she gets ready to face the raging waves. As fate would have it, she vigorously propels herself onto a wave, and soon finds herself plunging into the water. However, her superb swimming abilities save her, enabling her to emerge unharmed and confident. Next, we see Tommy and her coworker Deb working on a painting. As they immerse themselves, they suddenly notice a boat swiftly approaching their location. The boat stands out with its exquisite design, and is steered by a strikingly handsome, tall man sporting a navy shirt. Deb can't help but be intrigued by the name of the yacht, Mayaluga, so she decides to find out what it means. She questions him formally about the meaning behind the name. He politely answers, Mayaluga is the thought of reaching the horizon. The man, Richard, chooses to continue talking to the two girls after they are enthralled by his reaction. He inquires as to whether they would be eager to offer assistance. Tommy and Deb immediately agree to help Richard, because they are helpful by nature. Deb and Tommy collaborate closely to help Richard secure his yacht to the pier. Deb takes advantage of the situation to ask Richard what his name is. He introduces himself and strikes up a friendly rapport, while also showing a desire to get to know the females better. Tommy is approached by Richard so he may grab the rope. They converse with comfort and familiarity, which suggests a bond between them beyond their brief meeting. It's time for them to say goodbye to one another, now that they have completed their duty. Tommy emphasizes how happy she is to have met Richard. Richard responds by expressing his want to see them once again. Richard and Tommy can't help but gaze at each other as they start to leave. It seems as though they have struck an unspoken understanding. Tommy wakes up the following morning with a sea of thoughts racing through her mind. She is observed smoking a cigarette, while standing on the porch and watching Richard work on his yacht. A smile dances upon her lips as an array of emotions starts to stir within her heart. 
Tommy takes her backpack and heads outdoors shortly after. She grabs a pail, fills it with ice, and moves purposefully in the direction of Richard, who is still completely focused on preparing and slicing a fish. They formally greet one another, and Tommy offers the pail, implying that he might require it. Richard gratefully receives it and expresses his appreciation for her consideration. Tommy wants to help more, and asks if there's anything else he needs. Richard politely declines, expressing his gratitude for her kind offer. The chance presented itself, so Richard invites Tommy to dinner. She widens her smile, but kindly lets him know that she is a vegetarian. Unfazed, Richard promises the woman with assurance that he has the culinary expertise to create exquisite vegetarian meals. Tommy is delighted by his excitement, and asks if he needs any extra aid before offering her support. Richard replies that just fresh veggies are needed. Tommy goes off to find the essential ingredients, feeling encouraged by the potential. Following this, Tommy is entranced by the yacht's appeal, while Richard painstakingly makes dinner. She cannot help but convey her admiration for the amazing craftsmanship, dumbfounded. Tommy is in awe as he humbly admits that he constructed the boat by himself. She acknowledges the significance of his achievement, and its sincere deserved recognition. Tommy and Richard are currently seated next to one another, enjoying their dinner. Tommy leans forward and starts talking about Richard's lone sailing trip, out of real interest. Richard's demeanor changes into one of gravity as he continues to tell his story, revealing the terrible realities he endured while navigating the uncharted waters alone. He clearly describes the trying circumstances he faced while facing bitter cold, suffering through anguish, and surmounting insurmountable challenges. Tommy is intrigued, but she has a sneaking suspicion that his story might not be entirely true. Richard acknowledges her skepticism with a nod, before going on to describe the numerous details of his extraordinary voyage. He discusses his difficulties with having burnt skin, getting too little sleep, feeling seasick, and always being hungry. He also discusses how being at sea for days on end damaged his head and caused hallucinations. Tommy concentrates on Richard's face as she listens intently, attempting to grasp the significance of his experiences. After a brief pause, she queries why he would willfully endure such trials, in the absence of any satisfaction. Richard stops to consider and collect his thoughts. He recognizes a mysterious sensation that continues calling him to the beach with a soothing breath. He describes the strong connection and intensity he feels with the boundless horizon. With each blast of wind and the rhythmic melody of his boat slicing through the waves, he describes the hidden source of his renewal, a feeling of regeneration that enters his spirit. Tommy listens to Richard's words echo around the room with amazement and adoration. He has persevered on such a difficult path with such perseverance, bravery, and unwavering determination that she is in awe of him. Richard apologizes for being too sappy, trying not to seem too sentimental or overly emotional. Tommy reassures him that his genuine displays of emotion are evidence of his ardor, assuaging his concerns with a kind grin. At that same moment, they both sense the magnetic pull of the Wild River, and their relationship deepens. They go on a sailing adventure, enjoying one another's company as they cross the ocean together. During their journey, they talk about how much they adore and admire the vast, beautiful ocean. Curiosity and a desire for adventure motivate them to climb higher, where they find a hidden jewel in the form of a spectacular waterfall. They climb eagerly, and are astounded by the rushing water. Tommy feels brave, so she leaps into the sea from a high point. Richard finds the willpower to follow suit, despite his conflicting feelings of dread and concern for her safety. His pulse is beating as he leaps into the waves in a desperate search for Tommy. Richard is surprised to see Tommy quietly contemplating beneath the water's surface, her serenity in stark contrast to the turbulent currents all around her. He grabs her. They then joyfully swim and giggle contagiously as they playfully interact with the water. They are shown sitting next to one another on a sandy beach in the scene that immediately follows, with Richard filming priceless moments with his camera. As Richard tenderly takes Tommy's face in his hands and leans in for a passionate kiss, a touching scene plays out. Every day that goes by, their relationship gets stronger and their love deepens, forging an unbreakable connection. The camera pans away from the action to see a battered boat slowly rocking in the waves. Tommy is asleep while surrounded by the precious memories of her time with Richard. She stirs abruptly, snapping out of her fantasy, and once again becomes conscious of her surroundings. Broken and disorganized objects are all around the boat, which is in a terrible state. Tommy has a nasty head wound that is making her suffer and bleed. She nevertheless musters the will to fearlessly emerge from the rubble. Tommy is unclear about what to do, since she is feeling overwhelmed and disoriented. She is stuck in the water with no way to call for help because the strong storm destroyed the radio. Tommy is even more disheartened by the fact that Richard is nowhere to be found, as she recognizes there is no use in relying on the broken boat and torn sail. In spite of her gloom, she observes a lifeboat in the distance, and wonders if Richard may have gone there to save himself. After pumping out all of the water from the boat, she considers how to get out of her situation. The prospect of jumping into the turbulent waters is disconcerting, and it seems far from the lifeboat. Tommy is worried about leaving the boat behind, since it could get lost. 
She decides to repair the sail after noticing it is broken, exerting all of her might to go through the barriers and bear the pain of her wounds in order to reach the lifeboat. Tommy is tenacious. She skillfully repairs the sail and replaces the yacht's damaged components with duct tape, finally regaining the sail's functioning. She takes command of the boat and confidently makes her way to the lifeboat. She ties a rope around herself and jumps into the ocean, fighting the strong waves that are attempting to stop her. Tommy continues to advance because of her devoted perseverance. As she gets closer to him with each stroke, she can feel her heart thumping quickly. When she does approach him, the realization of his protracted life overwhelms her with emotion. She grips him strongly and gives him a hug. She is still facing many challenges, though. Forcing Richard back aboard the boat will need all of her remaining strength. She fights against fatigue and exerts every ounce of strength she still possesses to complete this challenging endeavor. A lovely flashback shows them enjoying one another's company as they stroll through well-lit streets at night. As they continue to stroll, Richard gifts Tommy with an orchid, and their beaming smiles shine light into the night. At a gorgeous waterfront restaurant, they later enjoy a beautiful supper, and have in-depth chats about their lives and special memories as children. Tommy divulges information about herself, and offers personal tales that range from amusing and light-hearted incidents to important events like her graduation and beloved family get-togethers. Richard is enthralled as she describes how her love for sailing grew, and he looks at her with affection. Richard at first politely refuses Tommy's invitation to dance. But as the song continues, Tommy's contagious energy gradually induces him to join her. They happily dance and laugh together in perfect time, exuding uncontrollable delight. Throughout the dance, they steal passionate kisses from one another, to show how much they care. While they are still in each other's arms, Richard audaciously asks Tommy whether she would be interested in joining him on a worldwide tour. With a broad smile that lights up her face, she conveys to him her eagerness and readiness to accompany him on this amazing journey. They continue to dance as they anticipate achieving their common goals. Back to the current moment, Tommy gains confidence once she finds Richard. She turns her attention to Richard's leg wound, which appears to be severe. She delicately wraps the hurt foot in bandages. She confronts Richard and tries to move him slowly, because of his seriously injured ribs. Assuring him that everything will be well, she hugs him and cradles his face. She holds him tightly, knowing they can get through any challenge together. In a flashback, as they stroll together, leisurely shopping for groceries, Tommy and Richard engage in lighthearted conversation, suggesting places where they are going to sail. In the midst of their pleasant outing, Richard tenderly pulls Tommy into his embrace, deepening their connection. A recognizable voice shouting Richard's name interrupts their stroll as they are lost in one other's company. After hesitating briefly, Richard looks in the direction of the noise and sees his friend coming. Richard is greeted with warmth by Peter, an elderly guy, who is joined by his wife Christine. They converse about one another's lives. Richard gladly introduces Tommy to Peter and Christine, to display their blossoming relationship. The group decides to stick together longer, so they grab a cup of coffee at a nearby coffee shop. Peter makes the announcement that they will be having a serious discussion once everyone is seated. There is a tense, eager atmosphere. They claim to have come a great distance, and they are from California, where they have a beautiful private yacht. They now require immediate aid, nonetheless, as a result of unanticipated events. With the assurance of a sizable reward for his services, they humbly beg Richard to return their boat to California. Richard is intrigued by the proposal, and he starts to think about the possible reward and financial gain if he completes the work successfully. In this specific memory, Tommy finds peace by the lake while thinking deeply. Richard notices her and, seeing how concerned she is, he decides to join her. As he patiently waits for her desire to express her ideas, he sits down next to her. Tommy admits that the opportunity at hand may be a good one, but deep down, she feels that returning home is not the path she desires to pursue at this moment. With heartfelt honesty, she assures Richard that she won't stand in his way, if he truly wishes to leave. However, to Tommy's surprise, Richard firmly declares that he will decline the offer. He candidly expresses that he didn't embark on this journey across the vast oceans only to let go of the woman he loves. Touched by his words, Tommy chuckles, appreciating his unwavering devotion. Curiosity piqued, Tommy playfully requests to see the boat. In the ensuing scene, Tommy looks at the map in an effort to leave. Richard encourages her, saying that she can do anything she puts her mind into. After a few minutes of reflection and searching, she comes to the realization that they might reach Santiago in 20 days if their yacht goes smoothly. But the waves and wind are quite powerful there, which could easily sweep away their yacht even further. She has difficulty deciphering the information on the map, but she persists in reading. It is obvious that they couldn't even travel in months, as opposed to days. However, Tommy decides to give it a shot, since they are left with no other choice. Tommy eagerly follows Richard's leadership as he grabs the reins and leads them into the enormous ocean. 
On a lovely night, aboard a boat with warm, enticing lights, they are joined by Peter and Christine. As laughing fills the space, they converse calmly and enjoy one another's presence. Peter enthralls everyone with fascinating tales of his amazing sailing adventure. During their alone time, Richard and Tommy explore the yacht's interior, admiring how roomy and neat everything is. Their next 40-day cruise will serve as inspiration for Richard's envisioned future, which he describes as being expansive and filled with a variety of events. His promises of an incredible year of travel with him pique Tommy's interest. Tommy chooses to go off on a new trip, with the common goal of seeing the globe. After being affected by Richard's powerful argument. They embark on a beautiful journey that offers countless opportunities and brand new places to discover, because of their shared passion of travel. Richard and Tommy are contemplating the islands they must go through, and the path they must take, while making painstaking preparations. Their trek covers a harrowing distance of 4,000 miles, it seems to go on forever, and offers both struggle and wonder. They mentally get ready for the tough days that lie ahead, as they are aware of the amount of time it will take to complete their task. The next scene finds Tommy absorbed in writing a letter to her mother, in which she ecstatically declares that she will soon be returning home. She speaks enthusiastically about her next voyage, which will take her back to San Diego, as well as her most recent work as a sailor. Tommy is presently dealing with a multitude of challenges as she tries to make it aboard a boat without the necessities. Despite the discomfort, she makes an effort to treat her wound, since her first concern is remaining alive. Tommy confides in her mother about Richard, the guy who has grown to be an important part of her life, in the letter. She recounts how their love grew in just a few short months with amazing detail, showing how their relationship blossomed. She ends the letter in a tender moment, by expressing her love for her mother, and saying goodbye till their eagerly awaited reunion. Tommy and Richard accidentally stumble upon a jar of peanut butter while attempting to overcome the challenge in the water. Their moods instantly become buoyant at that moment. They discover through this experience that even the most fundamental pleasures may be profoundly satisfying, under the most challenging conditions. Despite their problems, they can chuckle, giving them a much-needed reprieve from their suffering. Tommy shares with Richard a considerable portion of the peanut butter, despite their difficult situation. They are aware that they are off track, after five days of drifting. The rudder is the source of the issue, which Tommy finds out right away. She straps on a diving mask and dives in, with a determination to mend it. She sees a sail fragment stuck in the rudder as she is descending. Tommy is so adamant about getting the obstruction free that she uses both her hands and knees to exert all of her might. The fact that their food supplies are critically short complicates matters further, and Tommy, who is vegetarian, faces a lot of difficulties because of this. Tommy worries more and more as the situation worsens. Richard reassures her that as long as she keeps catching fish, they will always have food. He tells Tommy to go fishing, but she hesitates, trying and failing over and over. She regretfully realizes her error and apologizes to Richard, who is already hampered by serious wounds and fractured bones. Richard tries to calm her down, and affirms that they will be fine. But as the rain starts to fall, a ray of hope appears, giving Tommy great delight. She gathers rainwater in any container she can find. Ten days later, she stumbles upon a face cream, that offers her immediate relief when she applies it to her cheeks. She also decides to use some of the cream on Richard's wounds, hoping it will alleviate his pain. Eighteen days have passed since they were stranded, and amidst their search for useful items on the boat, Tommy discovers a bottle of wine. For a fleeting moment, they reconnect with their humanity, celebrating and sharing a drink together. Tommy gradually becomes happier with singing and playing the guitar, until Richard's confession surprises her. In order to spare her from the situation they are in, he swears he wishes he had never met her. Tommy, though, doesn't dwell on the past, and she values the adventures they have had thus far. Richard picks up the same guitar one night on the yacht, and begins to play some old tunes. His mother's premature passing is brought up by Tommy, who sees a chance for a meaningful dialogue. Richard agrees to open up, disclosing how he has internalized the trauma, and frequently imagines his mother's disapproval in various scenarios. Tommy is curious, and asks Richard what he thinks his mother would think of their position. Overwhelmed by his love for Tommy in return, he makes the profoundly brave decision to pop the question to her, pledging a lifetime of friendship and adventure. Tommy joyously accepts his emotional proposal, and dons a stunning handcrafted ring that Richard fashioned during their journey. Tommy's eyes shine with happiness as she does so. He promises to replace it with a genuine ring once they return to the States, and they share a passionate kiss, sealing their love amidst the backdrop of the boundless ocean. Every day that passes brings a worsening of their situation, and it is at this trying moment when darkness envelops the night. Tommy notices a huge yacht off in the distance. She urgently fires a flare gun, hoping for assistance. Unfortunately, the boat ignores the situation, believing that no one could possibly become trapped in such a remote location. 
Hallucinations become a huge issue that Tommy, in particular, falls victim to. This condition was brought up at the outset of the movie. Tommy discovers herself caught in a flurry of odd feelings and sensations. She becomes uncertain as she struggles with the fear of becoming insane, and the overpowering conviction that their current predicament cannot be changed. For Richard's sake, Tommy gives her best, while putting an unrelenting effort and fighting through the difficulties they encounter. As the days go by, the count comes to an excruciating 40, the amount of days spent locked within the yacht. A few days later, Tommy musters the fortitude to inform Richard about the 690 kilometers they still need to travel, as she helps Richard satisfy their thirst. Let's go back in time once more, though, to the moment their adventure took an unforeseen turn. Their blissful union is soon tested, as dark clouds loom on the horizon. Unsettling news is delivered by the crackling of the radio. An ominous storm rapidly approaches, threatening to unleash its fury upon their tranquil haven, with its center 1,000 miles away from where they are right now. It is in this moment of impending doom that an enigmatic bird, carried by the winds, unexpectedly lands on their yacht, leaving Richard and Tommy baffled by its presence. Their bewildered minds contemplate how this bird managed to traverse vast distances without a visible shoreline in sight, a testament to nature's mysterious ways. Richard, demonstrating natural fortitude, decides to maneuver their craft in the other direction, hoping to avoid the fury of the hurricane. Tommy, on the other hand, insists on finding safety at a neighboring sanctuary until the storm passes. A tense moment develops between the two as they wrestle with the weight of their decisions, conscious that precious time has already passed through their fingers. Unfortunately, their hurried judgment proves to be their downfall. They had no clue fate would conspire against them. Their hearts sink with dread and horror as they glance out at the raging sea, for a gigantic storm looms ominously overhead, accompanied by towering waves that threaten to engulf their flimsy craft. The formerly tranquil environment evolves into a stormy battleground, testing their fortitude and trying their desire to survive. Drawing upon a childhood memory, Tommy recounts the solace she found as a child, retreating to the safety of the bathtub, whenever her relatives engaged in heated arguments. Inspired by this recollection, she proposes that they do the same now, using their imagination as an escape from the tumultuous ocean that tosses them mercilessly. Determined to leave no stone unturned in their fight for survival, Tommy grabs the emergency locator transmitter, ensuring that their desperate cries for help will reach the ears of potential rescuers. They persist, despite the enormous difficulties, with all of their tenacity and ingenuity. Since the boat won't be steady enough to resist the power of the big waves, Richard knows how perilous their position is, and urges Tommy to move down. She makes an effort to leave Richard's side, but gives in to his pressure, guiding the dangerous boat to dock securely below. Tommy is knocked to the other end of the lowest level by the wave's merciless, brutal onslaught. As it all happens, Richard loses his balance and plunges to the ground below. As the flashback comes to a conclusion, we see that Richard has never been at Tommy's side since the accident and their shared experiences have just been figments of her lonesome journey. Tommy's hallucinations become so intense that she feels Richard's presence long after he has left this world, and imagines him standing by her side. She converses with herself introspectively when she is by herself, taking comfort in the delusion that Richard is around. This realization shocks Tommy back to the present. However, she has gained the fortitude and resilience necessary to go over the difficulties she has encountered, thanks to those illusions. Tommy dives into the ocean once again, looking for food with a steadfast will to survive, ready to take advantage of any chance that comes her way. She miraculously succeeds on her first try, landing a fish that provides a gleam of sustenance among the big ocean. Though it contradicts her principles, hunger supersedes her reservations, and she consumes the fish, driven by the primal instinct to sustain her own life. Just as she grapples with this internal struggle, a small bird emerges, defying logic as it finds its way to their desolate surroundings. Unexpectedly, peering through her binoculars, Tommy's eyes widen in disbelief, she spots land in the distance, a beacon of hope amidst the vast ocean expanse. Without wasting a precious moment, and with a thrill of optimism, she grabs her flare pistol and blasts it into the sky, cutting through the desolate silence, and capturing the attention of a passing ship that rushes to her rescue. The need to recreate the memories of their joint adventure draws Tommy back to Richard's boat in the days that follow. As she flips through the pictures of the happy times they shared, a wave of sadness overtakes her as tears start to roll down her cheeks. Searching frantically for traces of their history, she peruses every nook and cranny. She then makes the touching discovery of the flower Richard previously tenderly gave her, as a reminder of their love and the frailty of life. Tommy makes her way to the beach where their lips touched for the first time, her heart heavy as she walks toward the coast. The flower, which she lets go into the softly lapping waves, acts as a touching memorial to Richard. Against all odds, Tommy survives her frightening ordeal thanks to unanticipated coincidences. This stirring true story stands as a testimony to the unflappable energy of the human spirit. After being saved, Tommy makes the decision that sailing is what she wants to do with her life. Tommy's unyielding determination is a timeless example of the tenacity of the human spirit. 